Hello everyone and welcome to this OMED 1356 um, Adobe Spark page which is focusing on how to do your assignments for this module. Uh, we spend time in class um, either on the online sessions or maybe physically in the classroom. We spend a few occasions at least on looking at your assignments and there are lots of opportunities for you either to book small group tutorials with me, some of you do one-to-ones and obviously plenty of time online. There are so many opportunities for you either in the weekly forum zones or in the specific one that focuses on assignments. So when you're starting to think of your ideas thrash them out in public with us. Start messaging there rather than email me um, which sometimes means that I'm replying to you one by one and I'm saying the same thing to so many of you. It would be great if you could start sharing your learning. Don't think of this like doing an assignment um, that you have to keep from others. Think of it more as a collaborative event so that you can share ideas because especially when it comes to the presentation days and usually there's so many of you that the presentation days may be split over two or three days. So when we come to those days you might notice that some of you are doing a similar theme and therefore just like a real conference we can actually sort of program you in so that you're all presenting at a particular time of day um, in one big um, uh, section of the day. A couple of years ago this happened with so many of the health visitors wanting to do the topic of breastfeeding. There might have been about six of them all together but not one of them was doing anything similar to the others so although they had the, the theme of breastfeeding it was completely and utterly different uh, focus that each and every person was bringing to this. So it was tremendous, it really gave us the experience of being at a conference where we could then say oh this morning's theme that's all on about breast feeding and it was really riveting because everybody had different perspectives to bring on this and therefore lots and lots of shared learning so you've got great opportunities with your presentations in one of the units on this module you'll see that we spend time looking at how to develop conference posters so remember the assignment itself you're doing a presentation as though you're going to a conference. So if you have got a particular conference in mind, that's absolutely great. It means that you can have a look at the conference website, see what they require, and then just adapt their requirements to fit into to ours. Because here you've only got 15 minutes. You may be going to a conference that says they want you to speak for, say, 40 minutes. So just cut it down so you've got 15 minutes. Throughout the Adobe Spark page, you'll see I've given you loads of information on what you should put on each of your particular slides, if you're using PowerPoint or Prezi or something similar. So the main things that you should cover, because they're generic requirements for most conferences, unless you go into a specific conference that says focus on certain things, and that's absolutely fine. So again, just tell us, I'm doing this in relation to such and such a conference, and these are the requirements they've got. So if you want to do a conference style poster, Follow the guidelines on a different Spark page, which you'll find on your Moodle site, looking at how to develop conference posters. So you design your poster. If we're presenting all of this all online still, then obviously you don't need to physically print it off. If you are printing it off at the university printers, I think it's about £4 for one. And then if you go to high street places or book it online, the prices are going to be different, but maybe the quality of the paper is better, or if you need it laminated, all of those things to take into consideration. Okay, so you may be doing a conference poster, but even if you do a poster, then you still have to do a PowerPoint or Prezi to show it. Because when people go to conferences, you'd have the poster up on the wall behind you. But with many conferences now, they're saying, well, yes, we'll pin your big posters up for everyone to see. But we're also giving you the opportunity of a 15 minute session to present your poster to us. So in that case, you may want a picture of your poster on the very front slide. So imagine us all walking into the lecture hall and you've got the picture up of your poster. So we can all see, oh, that's the poster that this person's talking about. But then still follow the guidelines I've given on the Spark page. So you'd normally introduce the topic, give a background, rationale and so on. So you do that. 
If your poster is going to be for a different audience and you're speaking to um, a particular conference. So say, for example, if you want to design a poster to put up in a young people's service, or maybe you're a school nurse and you want to put a poster up in school, and now you're presenting this poster at a school nurses conference or maybe a public health conference, then it's as if you're doing it for an audience by proxy. That's fine. You would just tell us then in the rationale why you've chosen the particular poster and um, which audience you're addressing it to, but then you still need to cover with the audience you're speaking um, to all the main things about introduction, background, rationale, review of the literature, all those common things that run across all presentations. OK, so the choice is yours. You can either do a poster or do it as a presentation set, so maybe using PowerPoint or Prezi, and then you've all got 15 minutes and questions and answers built into that. You've got 15 minutes to present it to us as though you're at a conference. OK? And when I keep saying to you PowerPoint, Prezi or something else, the something else may be Mentimeter. And remember, you've got free access to that through your university account. So when you sign into the portal, in the search box, just search for Mentimeter. And you'll see the link that you click on that and then it signs you in through your Greenwich account. And you can design that just as you would design a PowerPoint, except you can't have the animations that you would on PowerPoint. OK, so um, you may be going to a conference and you might tell us, right, I've prepared this to go to a particular conference and they wanted people to do a workshop and in the workshop they want interaction with the audience and therefore there will be time for the audience to contribute to how we're developing our knowledge about this particular theme. So in that case rather than using PowerPoint and flipping between other methods do it all in Mentimeter. So you can design each of the slides just as you would in PowerPoint, but then some of the slides are going to be for audience participation. So when you create the Mentimeter, it generates a unique code for you. So uh, you get your audience then to go to menti.com and type in the number. And then it means we can all vote on your questions or if you're using word clouds or uh, different types of speech bubbles and all that type of thing. So you can make it as interactive as you want then, but you'd need to tell us that you're therefore aiming to do this as a workshop presentation. One final note I'd like to say to you, please don't treat this like doing a teaching session. It's not as if you're um, at maybe your trust induction day and you're talking about you know um fire safety awareness on um on trust premises it's not a teaching day where you're just giving information look at the guidelines in the handbook because they really encourage you especially because you're a level 7 you're the ones who will be um advising and leading practice you'll be the ones who'll have a voice maybe at your trust boards for example so you're the ones that should be at the cutting edge of new learning that's coming out about topics. So whatever it is, even it, say for example if it was breastfeeding, don't just do something on the, the benefits of breastfeeding. You must make it customizable to your own particular area of study, uh, your own area of practice, and then you tell us why you're doing this. So supposing you say, well look, I'm interested in breastfeeding, and in the area I work in, we've got really, no, uh, really low numbers of people who breastfeed. So maybe you're going to start off by doing the exploration of the reasons why you're uncharacteristically low in your particular area. And maybe it's because of people's understanding of breastfeeding, or maybe there have been particular scares about it, or maybe it's because of particular religious or, or cultural uh, um, beliefs. So whatever it is, you then customise your presentation around trying to improve practice on this. So it's not just an information session at all. You are trying to show that you're analysing some of the problems even. So um, some restraining factors, some things that hinder you doing whatever it is you want to talk about, and some things that will enable you to do it better. OK, so you can do all of that. So there's critical analysis involved in it. There's synthesis, that's you drawing things together, so drawing um, implications for practice together. And then you then present that to us to show how you're going to move these things on. OK, and, ooh, there's another final thing. I'll keep on saying final things. Another final thing. 
think of this in two different ways. If you're doing this and um, uh, you're on this postgraduate diploma programme and you think, right, I can't foresee me doing any more studies at this moment in time, therefore I'm just doing it for this particular module. Okay, then look at the handbook and it says you choose a particular topic which is relevant to your current practice area, okay? But if any of you are thinking of carrying on to do the top of MA in healthcare practice after this, maybe choose a topic that you think, I'd like to spend more time studying this. So if you know you're going to be coming back to do the top of MA and there's something that you're really interested in, you could use this opportunity Maybe it's a scoping exercise to see what's available on this particular topic and see if there are certain aspects of it that then inspire you to want to go on and do even more studies on this. Okay, so either as a self-contained unit in itself, or maybe this is a springboard onto further studies and further ways of developing your practice. Okay, thanks very much and I hope you enjoy this all.